Yes, I'm a free man. This is great. <laughs> I have my phone with me. I have my beautiful wife with me. You know, what can be better? Aww. Yeah. Your perspective has changed, huh? A little bit. A little but when, bit. I, when I went into yeah. prison, I was already very grateful. I was on a great road, you know, mentally yeah. and spiritually. Yeah. Um, but I had the time to work on everything else. Wow. You know? We'll yeah. talk a little bit more about yeah. that once, you know, once we get going. First, everybody just exhale. Yes. Can we just like breathe for just a minute? Yes. Yes. Because this is the first time you've kind of done something like this, right? For like a big event, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, to be a free man, it's, uh, to be honest with you, it's awesome. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have my beautiful wife next to me. I'm healthy. I'm sober. Back at work with my best friends on the number one show on MTV and uh, just living the dream. What has the last week been like since you got out of prison? Well, the last eight months I've been dreaming of what my first days would be like. First and foremost I wanted to spend some time with my beautiful wife. I wanted to have a naked pizza party. <laughs> did uh, that happen? Yes. That, happened. Yes, that, that did happen. That was the first night yeah, what we did. That yeah. happened. And then I slowly wanted to just get back to work. Um, but first start with the basics. Mm -hmm. Okay, The basics which is fitness, family, fun, and don't forget the finances because you don't want to end up back in prison. What did you miss the most? I'd have to say that um, the thing that I missed the most is probably my beautiful wife next to me. Mm -hmm. You sort of take your freedom, I would say, for granted sometimes. Mm -hmm. And once it is sort of taken away from you, you're taking advantage of once you get out. Not necessarily every minute, but every second, mm -hmm. every meal, um, every conversation. Uh, I cherish with my beautiful wife, with my friends. I love my job, so I feel like I'm on such an awesome road and we're very excited to uh, see what the future has to uh, offer. You mentioned you're grateful for every meal. I know yes. you love food, yes. you love to yes. eat. Yeah. What was your last meal before you went to prison the last and your meal? first meal out? What was the last The last meal was probably, I probably was ordering some sort of fast food delivery because yeah. I was, you know, ordering everything. You know, when you realize that your freedom is being taken away from you, you're like, you know what, I'm not going to get good food in prison, so I'm going to order McDonald's, I'm going to order Wendy's, I'm going Chick-fil-A, <laughs> we're turning up and living our best life. And I did that, and I, you know, I gained a couple pounds, uh, and but I had the time once I was in prison to concentrate um, on um, being my best self and, you know, losing the weight. Your first meal out of prison, was it the naked pizza party? or was yeah. it? it was the it naked was, pizza party, Okay, yeah. so it was yeah. pizza, pepperoni, yeah. all the toppings. We did did about six different pies. Yes, we did. We did so, six different pies. So sauce pie, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Regular margarita, mm -hmm. um, sausage, peppers, and onions he wanted. Plain. Plain. And then S broccoli S robin sausage. Side of uh, fried shrimp, mm. side of chicken fingers, mm. side of french fries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't forget the, the diet sodas. You just <laughs> ordered the whole menu. Pretty yeah. much, yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. So what is the real life sitch of being in prison, yeah, day to day, the your real, routine? The real situation in prison is not like the movies, I'll have to tell you that, <laughs> okay? What I did, I went to sleep every night at uh, 10 p.m. I woke up every morning at 7 a.m. and did fasted cardio for about uh, an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I was practicing intermittent fasting while I was in prison. My window of intermittent fasting was between 16 hours and 17 hours on the weekdays and 18 and 19 on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, I had to continually uh, challenge myself, whether it was in the gym or and or diet, uh, as well as reading books and trying to progress you know, spiritually as well because if you uh, do not um, keep yourself busy in there, I don't handle for the devil. I saw a lot of things in prison where some guys weren't doing those things and you saw depression and anxiety sort of, you know, taking control. So how did you keep yourself busy? Uh, I worked out between two to three times per day. Um, on holidays, especially three times because, you know, on your birthday or Easter or something, maybe if you're in your fields a little bit, you're like, you know what, today I'm going to do something to make my future self proud and I put in like two to three a days. Um, as well as intermittent fasting, I would read books, I read the Bible, um, I love to read magazines, I would email and speak to my wife once a day, I would email and speak to my best friends, um, you know, once a day and that really helped. So when you get in your feels, you yes. said, how sad did you get at times? It's natural, you know, just like anything in life. Um, I used to tell myself that uh, you've been assigned this mountain to show others it can be moved. You know, and, it, and, and for me, this was prison. But for other people, it could be anxiety. It could be depression. It could be divorce. It could be unemployment. You have a job or a responsibility to become better 
or bitter, and I chose to be better. When you got depressed, um, how did it feel and how did you tackle it? Um, I tackled it just like I just said. I would wake up every morning and I would do um, a very similar schedule. So you I, would just stay on a routine I was to kind of keep yourself up? I was very regimented. I stayed in my intermittent fasting, which is not easy. If anybody knows about fasting for 16 to 19 hours a day, it is not easy. Mm -hmm. You feel almost... Uh, um, like a, a reward once you finish the day. Like, wow, I did 19 hours today, <laughs> along with working out two to three times, along with reading a book or, um, or the Bible or magazine. So I, was, I felt very accomplished mm -hmm. uh, staying busy in prison. Did you read the Bible before you went to prison? No, I didn't. I was very spiritual. Uh -huh. you know. And I also went through recovery um, all the way up into prison. I had about three years at that time. I'm about to be coming up on four years. Um, which I'm very grateful for, and I wear my sobriety on my shoulder like a badge of honor. You talked about seeing others kind of get down yes. or, or crazy yes. things that you saw. Yeah. What is the craziest thing you witnessed in prison? Um, you know what? I just saw a lot of guys and with, where depression and anxiety was getting the best of them. I saw them like literally just like staring at the wall, not doing anything. Like, you know, just, you know, you can see how it was eating at them, you know, the isolation, being away from their family the most. And I met a lot of a lot of good people in prison. A lot of, you know, regular, you know, people with hopes and dreams and families and doctors and lawyers and accountants. You know, I and I heard their story firsthand. Um, but it also helped me come from my perspective to 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 know that um, to learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. and turn your L's into lessons. Mm -hmm. And I had a very positive outlook from day one to the end of, of my eight months. Did you make good friends in prison? People that you will keep in touch with? I don't know about keep in touch with. I did make good friends in there. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, it's not your job when you go to prison to make friends. It really isn't. It's your job to survive, mm -hmm. you know, and get out. You seem so upbeat about it. I'm I picturing, am. Lauren, I'm kind of picturing him in there helping those who did get depressed. Yes. He was. Yeah. That's exactly what he was doing. I had some people that were in there reach out to me when they got out and said, um, you know, I just want to thank you for being such a big part of his life. And he made my time go by faster there. And he made me yeah. learn and challenge and grow myself to become better while in there. And he made, he really helped a lot of people out in there. And also from being there, he helped me. Like, I would get upset when he was home. Like, I think mm -hmm. sometimes I was more, way more upset than he was that he was there. Mm -hmm. And he would email me and motivate me encourage and uplift me and encourage me every day while he was in prison, which not many people can do. Eight months you were able to do this. Did yes. you ever feel like you were hanging by a thread? No, no, I didn't feel like I was hanging for a thread. I just felt that everything in my life had prepared me for this journey. And although very uncomfortable, um, I, I lived one day at a time. Every single day, I, you know, tried to be my best self or better than the day before, yeah. and, and, and then move forward. And that was it. And I'll be honest with you, I was very successful. I had lost, you know, over 35 pounds in there. So I, the food was not great then. No, no, the food was not good. <laughs> but uh, the guys in there liked me. You know, if I needed extra salad or extra vegetables, those were some of the the ingredients in there that were so prized, fresh you know, salad or fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I needed that on a daily basis to be on a diet and get the old situation back. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I did that for eight months. And, um, but it could have been the opposite. I could have went to prison. And these guys, maybe they didn't like Jersey Shore. Maybe they didn't like the situation. Maybe they didn't like Big Daddy Sitch, you know, but they did. So you walked in and they all knew who you were? Yeah. And and what kind of welcome was that for you? Um, it was nice. I kind of, the first day I went in there, I kind of wanted to be left alone. It's it's a bit of a sensory over, overload and part of your brain is thinking like, is, is it like the movies? And it wasn't like the movies. The first, I think the second day in there I got a haircut. There was a barber shop in the salon and by no means was it a comfortable situation. Being one day away from your loved ones is unacceptable. Um, but it's manageable. You can survive it. How would you rate the food, one to ten? It is probably like the worst school lunch you've ever had. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're trying to lose weight and get healthy, it could be almost impossible, you know? And you talk about it not being a comfortable situation. It wasn't. I have been in prison for eight months, and you are not sleeping in a comfortable bed. I mean, it's not even a mattress, it's like a pad, mm -hmm. um, for eight months. You're not eating good food for eight months. You're away from your loved ones for eight months. Mm -hmm. So you're sh sharing a bathroom with over 100 savages for eight months. 
um, you're being told what to do and what you know what you can and can't for eight months. If you add all that in, you can see how you can see guys walk, you know, letting depression and anxiety get the best of them. Plus, also, I'm not able to work as well. I'm not able to support my family. I was lucky enough that I filmed so much of Jersey Shore before I left that while I was in prison, I was watching Jersey Shore on the TV, mm -hmm. and I was proud of mm -hmm. myself. You kept in touch with your Jersey Shore yes. classmates. How yes. did you do that from prison? They have a system in prison, almost like an app. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called True Links. And uh, my friends and my wife and my mother and uh, family were able to email me on a daily basis. I was, um, it was unbelievable the amount of love and support of, of the fans writing in and the letters and things like that. But every single day I would look forward to getting an email from my wife or getting an email from uh, Pauly D or Snooki. It was, it really made the time fly by. Who emailed you the most from the cast? Or did you speak to them on the phone as well? Who no, you, you only got 300 minutes a month, so I reserved those special minutes for the mm -hmm. for Mrs. Situation mm -hmm. here on the left, mm -hmm. right? And I used uh, my email for obviously every day with my wife and you know Jersey Shore crew and my mother and family and stuff. So who did you communicate with the most out of the cast? You know what? They all communicated with me like mm -hmm. almost every single week. Mm -hmm. You know, they really did. I mean, some of them even wrote. Like a handwritten, like, yes, a pen. yes, yes. I, I was surprised. A lot of people yeah. hand wrote and handwritten a letter. It was yeah. unbelievable. Snooky, Je who, Polly, who was, wrote the letters? Who wrote the letters? Um, you surprised. It, it, you know what? If you were, am I allowed to say who wrote the letters? Yeah. Ronnie wrote the letter, and I and it, Ronnie wrote the letter, and uh, <laughs> and Snooky and. Um, Paulie and Jay Well had emailed me the most. So Ronnie's handwritten letter. Yeah, I was, was it, very surprised when I got it. Was it emotional? It was. What can you share about that letter? Um, it was just like my friends, all of them, they said pretty much the same thing, that they, they couldn't believe the strength that me and my wife had and that you were able to go through this process with such uh, grace and class. Mm -hmm. And they were so proud of me and they can't wait to, you know, see me get home and, uh, you know, get back to work and, and film on Jersey Shore. Who came to visit? All of them. How all many times? Um, I would say like a couple times, you know. They yeah. all came. My wife came once a week. Mm -hmm. um, the Jersey Shore crew came, you know, every two months they would come. Let's talk about your marriage and, yes. and dealing with this. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You got married last November? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then two months later? Yeah. Yes. He's in the slammer. Yes. Yeah. How did that make you feel? It was a unique situation it for sure. sure, was, sure was. But if anybody knows our backstory, it's kind of... Um, something that we were able to just take on and I wasn't really scared at in the beginning. So we met 15 years ago. We dated for like three to four years in college. College sweethearts. Yeah. Took a huge break when Jersey Shore happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was working, you know, in the city and in my career and he was doing his career on TV. Mm -hmm. TV show ended. I moved back home from New York to New Jersey and we just bumped into each other and we were immediately back together again. Mm -hmm. so that was six years ago. So that was 2013. Mm -hmm. So we're best friends. You know, mm -hmm. we've experienced everything together from good, bad, and different. And the most challenging thing we went through together was his recovery. Mm -hmm. And yes. we went through that a few times. And um, last year when he got sentenced in October, he had already been almost three years clean and sober. Mm -hmm. So once we had put some significant time in with his recovery, we just became like a solid foundation where nothing was really scary to me. We were able to survive it and like thrive through it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was hard. It was not easy mm -hmm. at all. I don't know how people do it longer for years, um, but it definitely made us stronger for sure. This did not shake you mm. after dealing with addiction mm. and recovery. Yeah, 100%. recovery was way harder. Way harder than way prison. Harder. Yeah, I would choose prison over recovery. Talk to me about how it was harder for you. Recovery was way harder than prison. And I believe that my recovery over the past couple years had prepared me mm -hmm. for this journey to go through, you know, prison. I mean, we didn't think that I was going to get jail time. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought we were going to get probation, but the judge had every right to, to give me the eight months, and we accepted that. Mm -hmm. And we owned up to our mistakes, and we were accountable. Mm -hmm. And um, our main goal throughout the whole process was to handle it with grace and class, just not only for ourselves, but to show the young generation out there how to, to handle adversity, mm -hmm. you know? 
and move forward and continue to be your best, even if you make mistakes. How did you maintain your marriage during this eight month prison sentence? I would go visit him every week. Once a week. So I figured are those out. conjugal visits? No. I wish. No. 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 There were none there. Yeah. None. Um, that would have okay. been great, but no. <laughs> Not allowed. No. No. In the beginning, I went more than once a week. Um, mm -hmm. I went like twice a week. But then I had to figure out what was working for me. Yeah, I didn't want her to drive three hours it was you know, far. there and three hours back. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just was nervous. I didn't want her to get into a car accident mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just, so then it turned out to be once a week. Yeah, once a week visits in person and then daily phone calls. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'd have and a daily, specific time. Daily emails. We both would know each other's schedule every day with the email and working out a lot and just doing things to keep my body productive and you know being positive and healthy. Mm -hmm. What kind of transition has it been since he's been home with you? Because you got used to being on your own. Yeah, yeah. very true. Yeah, I had a little bit of PTSD, I think, um, more than him at first. So the first day we came home, you know, I'm used to being alone and I have our dog at home, but that's it. So when he was in the shower, I actually like went in there and like opened the shower door to see if he was still Aww. in there because I'm just not used to mm -hmm. him yeah. being there. But mm -hmm. it's been amazing. We're back into our groove and working, went right into work, so. Tell me the details of your probation. Probation is uh, very detailed. Um, but it's pretty much the main goal is to stay sober and to stay out of trouble for two years, okay. mm -hmm. along with community service. Random drug tests? Yes. Handing over financial records? Yes. 500 hours of community yes. service? Yes. Okay, so how hard will it be to abide by all of these rules? Well, at the end of the day, the way that I live my life, um, you know, I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal, I don't drink, I don't drug, I don't smoke, mm -hmm. I don't even speed. Um, I'm on probation, I can't afford any misunderstandings. So when you kind of live that way, um, keeping your side of the street clean, um, we're human, we make some mistakes, but it really, you know, makes life a lot easier when you're living uh, with integrity. So I, I don't think there will be an issue. I look forward to continuing to be my best self and living yeah. my best life with my beautiful wife. And he was already under all of that supervision throughout the whole case, yeah. so it's the same. The same. Con yes. The Will same you have an ankle standards. monitor? Will you? No, that's that's uh, that's like that's home, home confinement. confinement. That's home confinement. Okay, so no ankle monitor, yeah. no bracelet, no. Yeah. Okay. Have you met your probation officer? Yes, I have. I can't necessarily speak about her, but she was really nice. Okay, really nice. Yes, she okay, was. intimidating or usually um, they're pretty like tough. Yes, right? no, she was tough. Okay. But at the end of the day, if you're doing all the right things and you're sober almost four years. Um, there's no reason to, you know, um, you know, be on top of me like that. What is your biggest regret? My biggest regret, um, you know what, I really, I really don't have any regrets because I wouldn't be the man I am today if I didn't make those mistakes. Um, I was careless when I was in my 20s, I was reckless, you know, I was uneducated, um, I let substance abuse get the best of me. And eventually, five, seven years later, I had to pay for some of those, you know, mistakes. But in my 30s, I'm older, I'm wiser, more mature, accountable, responsible, and ready to handle whatever life, you know, throws at you. Do you ever have regrets about doing reality TV? No, uh, no, I definitely don't have any regrets about doing reality TV. I love my job. I think I'm very good at it. And, you are uh, very good at it. You're very entertaining. <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully we have a long career of, of different types of reality shows and we can continue to entertain millions. Do you think fame clouded your judgment? You know what, that's a very uh, tricky question because, um, you know, fame could cloud your judgment as well as money and being in your 20s. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, I'd have to say that before fame and money, I was wild and I was reckless and I was careless and I was immature. Um, and um, the money and the fame just, you know, just made it worse. Exacerbated yeah. all of it. Yep. How will you explain this season of life to your kids? <laughs> this season of life, this is called uh, making some mistakes when you're in your 20s and manning up in your 30s and being accountable and hand handling a negative situation with grace and class. What's the biggest change that you have seen in Mike? Biggest change other than physically? <laughs> <laughs> um, the 35 pound weight loss yeah. is, is a significant one for sure. Um, but honestly, I didn't think he could get more positive when he went in. He was already such a positive, uplifting, looking at the bright side of every situation in life. Mm -hmm. And I think he even elevated to another level of that mm -hmm. with his level of patience mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. learning that. And I could definitely use some more patience in life. Mm -hmm. So I inspire, <laughs> he inspires me to be like that a little bit more. Are you a changed man? Do um, you feel like you're a changed man? I definitely feel like I'm a changed man. 
you know, um, it really starts with my recovery though, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm four years clean and sober in a couple months and um, I just practice, you know, living one day at a time, being my best self and, um, you know, making sure that I'm, you know, the best man I could be for my beautiful wife, you know, the best son to my mother, mm -hmm. uh, you know, best friend to my friends out there and do the best job I can at work. and. Mm -hmm. And then after that, let go and let God handle it. Have you seen the cast since you were released? Yeah, yeah. We we mm -hmm. I saw the cast. What was it? A day after? Yeah, I think the day after. It was yeah. a day after. We went straight to work. You yeah. Know? And what was that reunion? I have like? one of the best jobs in the country. I think you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just being yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, just being myself and and being authentic and being able to articulate my emotions in front of the camera so the viewer can relate. What was that reunion like with your friends? Oh, it was unbelievable. It was uh, it was just a lot of emotions all at once. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just very grateful to have such close relationships with friends that uh, I call family today. What would your message be to your fans who have stood beside you through this journey? Um, I would have to tell them that uh, the comeback is truly greater than the setback. Let's talk about your brother. Yes. He's still incarcerated. Yes. Do you speak to him? Have you visited him? Well, I had to just ask probation for permission to visit him, and that was like the other day. So other than that, that's where we stand right now, because you need to ask permission to, to go to a prison. How's he doing? He's doing good. Okay. Yeah. And remind me, you know, years ago, um, he was your manager. Yes. Do you blame him for what happened? No, no, no. The past is in the past right now, and my main focus is, you know, making sure that he is comfortable and that, you know, and when he gets out to, you know, greet him with open arms. And how long is his sentence? Two years. Okay, and he has served how much? Eight months. Eight months. Yes. So he's got almost a yes. year and a half, not yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, he left. might have a year and a half, but once you do more than a year and a day, you're entitled to credit. Okay. Um, whether it's halfway house or home confinement. A lot of people don't understand the whole process, mm -hmm. um, but since he's been sentenced to two years, he's you know entitled to um, certain t uh, credits. How difficult has it been for your family to have two yes. sons, two yeah. family members yeah. in prison? I mean, listen, it's a difficult situation, but at the end of the day, um, you have to rise to the occasion and continue to move forward. What will the celebration look like when he too is released from prison? Uh, we'll mm -hmm. definitely have an awesome Sunday dinner ready for when my brother gets home. You know, I'm mm -hmm. sure my mom will make the meatballs and the sauce and, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, she'll probably make some dessert. Actually, my mom this Sunday is making a whole spread for me because I haven't gone over yet. We're going to have chicken cutlets, fettuccine with peas and ham, baked clams, chicken cutlets, mm -hmm. salad, <laughs> bread, and antipasto. What was it like when you saw your family for the first time? Um, I took my mother and mm -hmm. sister out, and my brother, my other brother, um, to a sushi dinner. Um, I wanted some fresh food, so I, I, I took them out for dinner. And then this week, we're having a Sunday Sunday dinner. So, the new the new Mike. Yes. 30, 30, how many pounds? Slider? Oh, I lost 36 pounds in prison. 36, 36 pounds. Yeah. Okay, you 36. are so much thinner than the last yes. time I saw you. Yes. So, what is your regimen going forward? Are you going to stay yes. like this? Or are you going to try to lose more weight? Are you going to put more weight on? Um, No, no. I'm looking to probably stay the weight I am right now. Um, I'm about 185. That's the weight that I weighed in college. So, that's like, you know, your fighting weight right there. I'm very proud that I was even able to get to that. Um, going forward right now, I'm going to continue to intermittent fast. If I can work out at least once a day, maybe even twice, I will. And I'm looking to unveil the situation very shortly um, and break the internet. And break the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you, the G and the GTL, you kept up with that. Yes. Now you're back. How are you going to do? Are, how happy are you to embrace the whole GTL once again? Um, listen, I'm so grateful just to be able to be with my wife, but at the same time have the freedom to do what I want. You know, I can go to the gym, I can go get a spray tan, I can get a manicure, a pedicure, a facial, you know, without someone's... Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm big with that. Yeah. I'm so big with that. Have you gotten a tan since you've gotten out? No, mm -hmm. no, I have not gotten a tan, but I'm willing to get a spray tan if you want to recommend me someone. Mm -hmm. it, lo it looks good though, this yeah. um, fair complexion. Yeah. What are you thinking, Lauren? No, I like it. I think yeah. he looks great. You haven't wasted any time. No, no, no. 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 I went <laughs> straight back to work. I hit the ground running. Um, we had that naked pizza party my first day out. We had some unbelievable sex. Like Yeah, that was about the only downtime and then right to work. Straight to work, yeah. Straight to work. Straight to work. Okay. I am happy for you that you are in such a good place Thank in your you. life and you have overcome both of you and you mm. seem like such a powerful influence Thank you. on him. She is. She's my strength. This is a situation right here. 
is, uh, is, is my strength. Last question, you talked about reading the Bible regularly for the first time when you were in prison. Are you still doing that? Do you plan to make that a part of your routine? Yeah, you know what, I'm very spiritual um, and I continue to, you know, you know, try to practice that and read the Bible. But um, I've been home for about four seconds, so uh, I guess only time will tell.